My name is Angela. And my name is Nicole. And welcome to the Ominous Stitch Podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. Welcome. We are so excited. We have a pretty epic week for you guys this week. Oh my gosh. We may have a two-parter <gasps> today. Our first two-parter. Yes. Oh my. So, Nicole. Yes. What has you in stitches this week? All right. Disclaimer. We have first world problems this oh, week yeah. of stitches. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I go to find a car wash. Okay. Okay. At the car wash. Yeah. How very 70s. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's our theme this week, everybody. 70s week. So I go to find a car wash. I, I try to find one that I usually go to and it's crowded. Like the gas station's crazy. I can't get into the car wash. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go to the next one. I know where it is. Okay. I go to the next one and I totally missed the turn. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'll just keep going to this, the next one. And, and by this time, I've got my little one with me because he's still recovering from the flu. So he's with me. He passes out in the car. Oh, and, poor buddy. Yes. And I go to the third car wash. I was like, great. I got one. Okay. And there's like nobody there. Oh, awesome. Yeah. You think that would be awesome, right? No. I think this was an ominous foreboding. Anyway. Okay. So I get into the car wash and I'm waiting for just one person and he goes through and he stops in front of me, like out of the car wash. And I'm like, okay, that's weird, but okay. whatever. That's fine. He's, he's out of the car wash. So I go in. This car wash is one of those that like touches your car and my my windows pull in like it pushes it in so it's it's like intense oh, oh. like my it's side like windows heating up your car yes okay. yeah it is intense but then I was like okay I need that though I need that touch okay as soon as it starts to to dry my car mm -hmm. I see soap just <gasps> flying everywhere <laughs> what it went into the hood like the hood area <gasps> so it didn't rinse well Oh. The rinse like was like this drippy drizzle. Oh okay, so I have soap flying everywhere, uh -huh. and it's vacuum. <laughs> like, oh my god, what do I do? So I keep going. I'm like, maybe I'll go slow through it, and it just keeps soap. It's flying everywhere. Oh my god! And I get through, and there's soap all over my car. Oh no! Yeah. So I stop, just like that guy did. Probably uh -huh. same situation, and I look, and it totally took off my front license plate too. <laughs> That's why it's in the okay. <laughs> When she pulled in this morning, we were just getting home, too, from running some errands. So, Nicole, we record at my house. And when Nicole was pulling in, I noticed that her license saw plate that. was in her dashboard. And uh -huh. I was like, okay, it's a choice. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, in California, and I looked this up, California it is required to have a front license plate. Oh. I didn't know that before we were, like, messing with it. Because when I bought the car, the license plate was kind of hanging off. So uh -huh. it was it was janky already. So oh, okay. I had to replace it. It totally took it off. Oh. I'm so mad. And if I didn't stop my car and get out, I wouldn't have seen the license plate in the car wash. Oh. Yeah. So that's that's a good thing. It was thing. a good kind of. It was good it's, and bad. It's a good thing that there was so much soap oh my flying gosh. in the car wash. And my, so yeah, bad. and my mirrors now were you know all messed why up. There was no line. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So I pull in and I like the car's running. My, thankfully, my car is one where I can lock it with the car running. And your your little one. My is little still one's in the car. still sleeping. He yes. slept the whole way. I, I was like, "Hey," to the cashier. I was like, "You can see out the window. There is soap all over my car. Can I run my car through the car wash again? I have to call my manager." <laughs> okay. <laughs> So she calls the manager at the same time. She's trying to help customers, too. So it's like I'm just standing there. It's weird uh -huh. and awkward. And and obviously the manager can see the videos of the car wash because they right. ask what car it is. So yes. she's on the phone. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And she's like, OK, uh huh. Uh huh. Towel. Oh, OK. Towel you, it off. She going to towel off the soap. Yes. So she <gasps> says you cannot go through again because it's basically soaping it up again. We cannot let you go through. But we can offer you a towel. Oh, my gosh. What is that? Hold on. Here's a reference. Have an A1 day. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it felt. So then I'm so fresh. I'm like, fine, whatever. I've been standing there for like 10 minutes while she's talking to her, her manager, trying to look through the video. Uh -huh. right? So I was like, give me the towel. So uh -huh. I go out. I have my water bottle. And, oh, Nicole. And I'm pouring water. Because at this point, it's so hot outside, too, yes. that the soap dried already oh my god so there's like my car so looks there's terrible soapy droppies yes everywhere you can even see it if you go outside you can look at my car it's okay. gross so i tried using my water bottle oh, with the towel no. wiping my 
car does. That's not going to do anything. No. There's so little water yes. compared to how much you need to have on the yes. car. Yes. It was terrible, Angela. So that's my first world <laughs> stitch. I, I was like, I gave her the towel back. I almost just drove off with it. I should have. I was like, thanks for the great customer service. Oh, right? no. So I gave her the towel back and I was like, okay, I just paid for the stupid car wash. It, it didn't and do your it. car is worse off. And than it's it was. worse. Oh, no. So there's my stitches for the week. I think I'll just take it. In. Oh, and here's the kicker. I don't yeah. have a hose at my house. Oh, that's right. Yeah. We live in a, a complex where some houses have hoses outside and some don't. I can't just go home and rinse my car off with the hose. I would have right? had to take buckets out of my house to do this. <laughs> oh, my <gosh>. so, um, <laughs> Next time that happens, come here. We have I hoses. I know, right? I can hose you down. Yeah. We I can hose you down before I think we'll today. have to do that today. Yeah. Thank you. But oh, my God. Gosh. That's my stitches. Oh, the guy across the street does the detail. I know. Yeah. Which I was thinking about doing that this week. Maybe next week or yeah. whenever. But yeah. anyway. We'll give him a call. Hey, neighbor across the street, come detail. <laughs> come, come help me come with detail my car. the She-Hulk. Yes. <laughs> yes. My car is, is nicknamed the She-Hulk because it's green and it's big and it's amazing. So, <laughs> so the moral of the story for oh, you. Yes. If the car wash looks empty, there's yes. a reason. There, There is a probably good chance it's going to be really shitty. <laughs> <laughs> and it may take your car apart so oh no yes okay well mine isn't that bad mine okay. is okay again it's a first world problem but but you know we have problems oh, it's so dumb we are in the middle of a kitchen remodel remodel Yay! which is an exciting thing but it looks so cool so far yes it's going to look wonderful when yes. it is done it's kind of a race to get all the painting because we're doing some of the remodel ourselves and then we're having a crew come and install new countertops and a new backsplash but we're painting our cabinets are painted they were painted when we bought the house and so we continue that tradition because I have no idea how many layers of paint are underneath that. And oh my gosh, what is the wood quality underneath the underneath the paint? So we, we keep the paint going. Mm -hmm. So my husband and I are doing the painting and we're trying to get it done before the crew comes to do the backsplash and the countertops. So we're racing against time here, which I will be fine. We can do that. You but got it. In the meantime, I'm looking at my kitchen. There's stuff everywhere. <laughs> There's paint everywhere. There, it's just for visually, oh, it feels mess. feels so so cluttered that it makes your brain cluttered, huh? Yeah, it hurts my head. I can get that. But you know, it, it's part of the process. Yes, and it's fine. And you I know where it's it going. And 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 it's all good. But I work from home. So luckily, my kitchen is kind of tucked away. You can't see it from where I teach, mm -hmm. but I can see it. Cause and you know where it's I, there. And I know it's there. Mm -hmm. And from where I sit when I'm teaching, I'm like, if one of my students just decides to pop their head pop, in, yeah, poke their head around the corner, they're going to be like, <laughs> what is going on in there? <laughs> But no, it'll it'll they be understand. beautiful. It'll it'll all be done hopefully by next week, and it'll be beautiful sometimes so you I'm need a little excited for that but. chaos before the calm right the calm yes. before the storm the, or storm before the calm before <laughs> did that backwards the chaos before the, the calm. chaos before the calm yeah so there. anyway yeah but it's it's i'm excited for when it's done it's looking great yeah i like the colors that you're choosing thank you yeah. i do too in the meantime if any of you guys have gone through a remodeling project again first world issue mm -hmm. but you know what that's like when you just have it's not put together the way you want it to be and it's fine it will get there and I'm excited for that but yes that's what has me a stitches this week because I'm gonna be great. talking to Nicole right now staring into my kitchen <laughs> she just can't stop looking <laughs> it's funny I get the same way though in my house even if things start to look a little bit chaotic I can't my brain just can't wrap around it and I have to I have to clean it before I can do anything right because mm -hmm. your brain just gets stuck and mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, I'm that stuck. way right now I'm stuck and you have right? a week until it yeah. can become oh, unstuck don't, don't tell me I have a week because that makes me go okay <laughs> oh, well, no, we still oh, have no. to paint the bottom cabinet and the rest of the doors and it'll, it'll be, be fine. fine we have time to get it done you and we will this. get it done but yeah it's, that's what has me in stitches I'm done staring into my kitchen stop now. staring at the kitchen are we ready to get stitching yes let's get stitching okay stitchers so this week I thought it would be fun since our 
theme is focused around the 1970s yes. with our story time today with Miss Nicole. And movie. And movie. That's right. Mm-hmm. I thought it would be fun to visit an old favorite pattern of the 70s, or at least it feels like it's a 70s pattern to me. I'm sure it was it looks popular so before then. Cool. We're doing chevrons. I'm so excited. Yay. This is a really pretty one. Uh, I, I decided to turn this chevron into a rainbow so that my daughter can hang it on her wall. Aww. So because she loves rainbows and colors, and you know, so I thought this would be a really fun little. I like rainbow little color yes you do i I wear black every day but i love colors (laughs) well yeah yeah. that's very true but black goes with all of the exactly it's just the meld of everything that's why there you go why okay we're doing a pretty nice gentle wavy chevron there are lots of different ways to do chevrons but the main important thing is that you have a set pattern. Oh, she has chevrons on her shoes. Hey, That's cute. I match our theme today. Did you today? do that on purpose? No, I just <laughs> bought these shoes. They're super cute. Sorry, I had to interrupt real quick. I bought these cool shoes that because it was on Amazon, they look exactly like Rothy's. Uh huh. But they're but like a third the of the price. price. Nice. So I got these black ones, and they've got a chevron pattern on yes, it. Yes, they and do. And it's they're really super cool. Super cute. Okay, so the idea behind a chevron is that you're going to increase and decrease at specific intervals. I just learned that DEC Yes. When they're doing symbols is decrease. Good Nicole. Right. Yay, Nicole. And I know how to She's do a decrease. Learning, I'm so guys. excited. She's picked up another term, another yep. piece of terminology for crochet. So the chevron that we're working with again is a nice gentle rolling chevron. It's more kind of like a ripple chevron pattern. So I got this from a book called The New Crochet Stitch Dictionary by Nelly Brass and Eveline Hetty Burkhart. And I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, but it looks like it's Eveline or Eveline? Eveline. 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 Eveline? Could be Eveline. I don't know though. I'm sorry. Brass. I like that Brass. Yes. The New Crochet Stitch Dictionary. And I picked this up off of Amazon and it's really cool. It's filled with how many? 440 patterns so if you want to learn a whole bunch of patterns or have a reference source for a whole bunch of crochet patterns this is a great little dictionary and it really is a dictionary you kind of have to under understand how to read charts Mm -hmm. i was just gonna say i see it from here the chart the pictures it's kind of neat how they did that yeah so you you have to understand how to read charts to be able to do this but it's a really cool little reference book and i love it so this is called the double crochet chevron so we're going to be doing just double crochets Oh, that's all it is. Double really? Crochets, and we're going to increase and decrease at certain intervals. Wow. Okay. I could do that. So the pattern repeat is 12. So you're 12. going to do 12 chains. Okay. Multiples of 12. So right now I think I have three patterns going on. So three times 12 is 36. 36. I can do Good some math. math skills. Woohoo. So you're going to chain 36 or whatever multiple of 12 you want to do. And then you're going to add three chains at the end. And that is going to be your first double crochet. Add three the, chains. Add at three the end. chains at the end. Okay? okay. So you're going to, so for me, I chained 39. Okay. And then I went back to the fourth chain from the hook so that gives me my three chains Mm. and then I double crocheted into that fourth chain off the hook Mm -hmm. and then I double crocheted let's see one two three more double crochets let me say that again so you double crochet into the fourth chain off the hook Mm -hmm. the chain three and that double crochet are going to be a stitch increase think about it being an increase so it's really two crochets into that first stitch got it okay then you're going to crochet three more double crochets then you do a decrease okay stitches five and six oh interesting so you're going to do a double crochet decrease which means you yarn over Mm -hmm. enter stitch number five Mm -hmm. pull up a loop Mm -hmm. yarn over pull through two loops oh gosh okay then you're going to yarn over Mm -hmm. and instead of finishing that double crochet you're going to insert your hook into chain six and then you're going to pull up a loop Mm -hmm. yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull through all three loops on your oh my gosh so that's how you decrease right decrease is taking two stitches from the previous row and turning it into one got it 
on the row that you're working on. Increase, you put two stitches in the same stitch from the row below. And so that's giving you two stitches. So we're always working with the same number of stitches, mm -hmm. but sometimes we're decreasing and sometimes we're increasing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. It'll make sense as you go I'm and sure as you will. get the pattern down, it goes. You're going to work six to a decrease and then mm -hmm. work, work six to an increase. You'll see this on our YouTube page yeah, too. This will be on the make YouTube more page. Sense. So let me say that again. After you work that decrease in chains five and six, you're going to do another decrease in chains seven and eight. Decrease in seven and eight? Yes. Okay another decrease in seven and eight. So that means you're going to yarn over, pull through a loop and chain seven, mm -hmm. yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, and then go through chain eight, mm -hmm. pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Oh my gosh. Okay. okay. I have to watch this in action. Yes, you will watch this in action. Okay. So that's seven and eight. Then you're going to do double crochets in the next three. So double crochet in nine, double crochet in 10, double crochet in 11. Then in stitch 12, you're going to do an increase. Ooh. So that means you're going to double crochet in stitch 12 once, double crochet in stitch 12 and twice. That, so two times. Two times. Okay. So that's the pattern repeat. Oh, wow. Okay. Then we're going to do it again. Mm -hmm. So in chain 13, mm -hmm. you're going to do an increase. Oh, geez. Okay. So that means in chain 13, you're going to do double crochet once, a double crochet twice. Mm. 14, 15, and 16 are single crochets. So you're going to single crochet in 13, single crochet in 14, single crochet in 15. Then you're going to do a decrease in 16, in 16 and 17. And 17. Okay. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. But you're going to have to count while I do this. <laughs> yes. Yes. So you have to count while we're doing this. So you're always counting kind of in six. You're working in, in six stitches or six chains, depending on which row you're on. Got okay? it. Okay. So you're going to do that all the way to the end. Chain three, turn. That chain three becomes the first stitch of the next row, mm. then you're going to do a double crochet in that same stitch. So that becomes an increase. So you're always going to start each row with an increase and, and end then, each and row with an increase. Oh, increase too. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. It's always an increase. Got it. And the increases happen once the wave gets established. The increase happens at the peak of the wave. Right. And the decrease happens at the bottom of the wave. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So I have a, a, a whole rainbow going on right now. I'm going to hand this yeah, right. to Nicole. <laughs> do you want me to do it? And then you can yes. watch me do it. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do it that way. Usually I do this. Everybody, you know that now. Yes. But I'm just going to watch. So I chained three mm -hmm. and I turned. Okay. Then I'm going to yarn over, insert into that first stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Got it. That's a double crochet. Then I'm going to do a double crochet in the next three stitches on their own. Okay, so that's a double crochet here. One, mm -hmm. two, and three double crochets. Now I'm coming to my decrease. Got it. Okay. So that means I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the first stitch. Mm -hmm. So now I have three loops on my hook. And you learn, yeah, because you yarned over. Yep. Okay. And then I yarn over and pull through two. So now I have two loops on my hook. Got it. Then I'm going to yarn over and insert my hook into the next stitch. Mm -hmm. Yarn over, pull through a loop, four loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two, three loops on my hook. Okay. Yarn over, pull through all three. Okay. So you have to pull, it's a double. Yes. I was doing singles on my project I was just doing before, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is double. Okay. Got Ms. it. Miss Nicole has fallen in love with Amigurumi that's making the little creatures out of crochet. I'm so And I was teaching excited. her how to make an axolotl and she's so excited. I, this is her new big thing. Yeah. You, you, you guys, that's probably going to be everything that I do now. So. Yes. So that's the first six uh, stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Now we're going to work the next six stitches, which is going to be the upside of the chevron. So it was downside? That was down. Wow. So that oh, starts oh, from oh, the it, top it, and it. it's going down. Okay. So now we're going to reverse what we just did. So we're going to start with a decrease. Mm -hmm. So we're going to yarn over, mm -hmm. pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops. So now I have two loops on my hook because I'm it. not going to finish that double. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, mm -hmm. yarn over, pull up a, a loop. Yarn over, pull through two, and now I have three 
loops on my hook mm -hmm. and I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three. Oh. So that's a second decrease. So okay. we just did two decreases in a row. Right. Now we're going to do three double crochets by themselves. One, go into the next stitch. Mm -hmm. Two, go into the next stitch. And three. Now we're heading to the peak mm -hmm. of this chevron. So we're going to do an increase, which means we're going to sink two double crochets into the stitch. So we're going to do one double crochet and enter that same stitch and do a second double crochet. So that's our first 12 Look stitches. Look at that. It went up. Yeah, it went up. So that's our first 12 stitches. Now we're going to do another increase. Uh oh, okay. So in the next stitch, we're going to do another increase. And this is what is giving it that gentle wave pattern. So we're going to do one double crochet and enter that same stitch and do a second double crochet. Then we're going to do a double crochet in the next three stitches. Mm -hmm. So one double crochet, two, two and then three. three it's looking crochet. so neat. I feel like they count three double crochets. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Okay, then we're going to do a decrease. So we're going to yarn over, mm -hmm. insert into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now I have two loops on my hook. Mm -hmm. I'm going to yarn over, insert into the next stitch, mm -hmm. pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Now I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through three. Perfect. Look at you go. So that's the next set of six. Wow, look how cool it's going. Yay. So now we're going to mirror that and we're going to do another decrease. So yarn over, pull through two. I have two loops on my hook, yarn over, enter the next stitch, pull through two. I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three. That was our decrease. decrease. Okay. Then we have three double crochets over the next three stitches. One, two, <laughs> a three. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Take a bite of the tootsie roll. So that's <laughs> that's the other one that's going on in my head. <laughs> old How references. How does it take to get to the center of a tootsie roll pop? Oh, that's so old school. Oh, let's find out. Okay, now we're going to do, <laughs> now we're going to do an increase. So we're going to sink two double crochets into the next stitch. So that's one and then two double crochets in the next stitch. And guess what? We're going to mirror that Yay. again because that was our second group of 12. Beautiful. So now we're going to do our last group of 12. So we're going to do an increase in the next stitch. So that's one and two into the same stitch. Three double crochets over the next three stitches. That looks one, so cool. two, and three. Then guess what? It's time for a decrease. Woohoo! So we're going to Get decrease. It's going so fast. It does go fast. Once you understand the pattern, yeah. it's just counting yeah. and making sure you're doing that. We're doing our last six stitches now, and we're going to start with a decrease. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. I have two loops on my hook. Yarn over, over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. I have three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through all three. That was our last decrease of this row. Oh, wow. Then we're going to do three double. single, oh, or sing, three double, double crochets. You scared me. I was like, did you change it? <laughs> no. Double. Three double crochets over the next three stitches. Okay. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's one, a two, <laughs> <laughs> and three. I like the blue you chose. Oh, thank you. It's a really pretty, like, just powdery blue. Yes. Very nice. And then I have one stitch remaining. Mm -hmm. And we have to end it with an increase. Increase. I remember. That's right. So in the last stitch, you're going to do two, which is your chain, by the way. It is your chain three from the lap from the previous row. So, one. so you're going to do two double crochets oh, okay. into that last stitch, which is your chain three from the row before. So two double crochets. So two into double it. crochets into that chain, and mm. there you go. Sweet. That's it. That's the chevron pattern that we're working on. It's called a double crochet chevron. That's and so it's, a, it's a really nice, gentle, wavy chevron. It's not, it doesn't have severe peaks. And so what I wanted to do with this, because I'm making a rainbow, it's time to change colors. And Nicole was asking me, how do you change colors? She's good at this and I don't know how, I just guess. So this is how we <laughs> change colors. So before I complete that last double crochet, my very last oh. double crochet of the row. Okay. So I have two loops on my hook right now because okay. I'm not 
completing that double crochet. Got I have it. to yarn over and pull through both. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my next color, which I was on the blue, now I'm on the purple. Okay, so I'm going to grab my purple and I'm just going to grab the purple and pull it through oh. those last two loops. That's easy. And then that's it. That starts your next chain. Oh my gosh, chain. look how that's easy. That's how you do it. It's super easy. Then you. Then I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. Yay, wow. That's it, and now I'm on. That's you how you it. passed on. Now, if you want, you can you can cut the blue, obviously. You can tie a little knot between the purple and the blue or whatever color you're changing to. Mm -hmm. You can tie a simple little knot, but you're just going to sew it in. Yeah. And then that way you change colors without... It's the, seamless. It's seamless. Yeah. yeah. Without interrupting what was going on before. That's you so don't neat. see the previous color jump up on the next I'm really line. bad at that. You know how, how I did it? I would like kind of eyeball it and then uh -huh. tie a knot and then just like tuck in the knots and things <laughs> so terrible <laughs> yeah this is an easy way there way are other easier. ways to do it but this is an easy way so now I'm on the next row I did my chain three I'm going to sink a double crochet into that first stitch and now I have my increase right there mm -hmm. and then you're back in your pattern of three double crochets over the next double and then a decrease mm -hmm. and then you decrease again three double crochets and then an increase Wow. So that's it. That's Yay. the chevron. It's so cool, you guys. Uh, we'll definitely post photos. It sounds complicated, photos. but once you see it, it's really yeah. yeah. We'll post photos. We'll make sure you check out the YouTube page so you can see Angela in action. You won't see me because I'm going to take forever to, to figure that one out. <laughs> I know no, she says it's it. going to be good and she says it's always easy, but I need her like by my side and everything I do. So yeah, check out the YouTube, check out our photos on our um, other social media. Yes. Is it story time? <gasps> it's story time. <laughs> Welcome to story time. It's story time. As we mentioned, we are going back into the 1970s, and this is our first true crime story. <gasps> dun, dun, okay. Dun. Warning. This is most likely not for your youngins because this has some pretty serious content. So this is viewer discretion or not viewer, <laughs> listener, listener discretion discussion. advised. We're going to get dark, y'all. We're going to get really dark. Now, first, though, before I dive in, yes. I have to give a shout out to this podcast Ooh. that did the thing. Like they yeah. are actual reporters Ooh. and they have like. 10 episodes and it just released this last May. But so the podcast is called Father Wants Us Dead. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's not ominous, is it? Oh my gosh. Father Wants Us Dead. Father Wants Us Dead. When I started doing this research, and I, I found out about this pretty recently, but before I found this podcast. So I was doing my research, and then I stumbled upon the podcast, which led me down this crazy rabbit hole. But the, the reporters are Jessica Remo and Rebecca Everett, and it's done so incredibly well. They're reporters for NJ.com, NewJersey.com. And they actually traveled to like different states to interview friends and family. Oh my gosh, yeah, they, they're hardcore. They are That's so awesome. hardcore. They made so many cold calls and they interviewed the former host of America's Most Wanted, John Walsh. <gasps> oh no. Nice. Because that's going to tie into this okay. whole thing. But I'm obsessed. It's And I listen to this podcast maybe like each episode like two or three times. Oh wow. Yeah. Besides, I did a little bit of internet research and there's books about it. So I researched the books too, but it's insane. But a lot of this is thanks to them. They really did a lot of the work. So I highly recommend to go check out this podcast. Father Wants Us Dead. Father Wants Us Dead. Yes. With Jessica and Jessica and uh, Rebecca. And Rebecca. Yes. Way to go, Jessica and Rebecca. Yeah, they are awesome. So, and I'll post our show in the show notes, the links that I also checked out. And there's, you should go look at these photos. You can just Google the photos of some of these things. It's insane. Okay, so we're going back to the beginning. Okay. September 17th. Let's start at the very beginning. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the one moment of happy that we're going to have today. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's going to get dark, y'all. Okay. Okay. September 17th, 1925. John Emil List was born to John F., 66 years old, and Alma M. List, 38 years old. Oh, my yes. gosh. In Bay City, Michigan. Oh, uh, yeah. somebody got themselves a sugar daddy. Oh, no. Maybe. Or, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Or 
Just uh, yeah. daddy issues? Daddy I issues. Don't know. I have no idea, but that's that's a pretty big gap. It seems like daddy issues are going to be a theme of this. If oh, our whole podcast. Father wants me dead. Wants us dead. <laughs> he also had a paternal half-brother and a half-sister, but no full-blooded siblings. He grew up in a strict Lutheran family, and apparently... <laughs> <Go> Lutherans. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> We, we used to work at a Lutheran college. That's how we met. That's true. But this is pretty intense, though. I don't yes. Know. Go Lutherans oh. to an extent. Oh, okay. Apparently, his mother was very domineering and overprotective. But other than that, he had a pretty much normal childhood with no signs of psychological troubles. In high school, he had a few friends. Former classmate mentioned he was just there. He never projected himself. He was always in the background. Okay? Mm. So he was, he was just like there. Now, after graduating from Bay City Central High School... He joined the United States Army and worked as a lab technician during World War II. And in 1946, he was discharged and then enrolled at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, where he earned a bachelor's degree in business administration and a master's degree in accounting. So Go accountants. Woohoo! There you go. <laughs> Love accountants. Angela's married to an accountant. Yes, I am. <laughs> Very proud. Now, in 1950, the Korean War was in full force and List was recalled to active duty. Um, he was stationed in Fort Eustis in Virginia. There, he met Helen Morris Taylor, and she was a widow of an infantry soldier that died in the Korean War. Oh. And she lived nearby with her daughter, Brenda. Brenda. Mm -hmm. They began dating, but after Helen dropped the bomb that she was pregnant, <gasps> yes, he proposed to her immediately because he was a very strict religious man and thought that was the right thing to do. Okay. So let's get married because I got you pregnant. I got you pregnant. We got to get hitched. That now. always works out well. Right? Not always. Foreshadowing. They married shortly after mm -hmm. on December 1st of 1951 in Baltimore, Maryland. That's going to come back. Baltimore. Yes. They got married in Maryland. Okay. Good morning, Baltimore. <laughs> Angel's not a vocal person. Not at all. I love it. Keep it going. Okay. Now, after this, he moved around all over from Northern California to Detroit to Kalamazoo. I got a gal in Kalamazoo. <laughs> Angel's got to keep this light, yo. A, B, C, D, E, e F, G, H, I. I got a gal. We played that in, in jazz Kalamazoo. band in high school. Oh my God. That's so I funny. bet you did. Yep. It's a very popular jazz standard. Jazz sax, your favorite. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Nicole I like plays the sax, but she does not like playing jazz. I sax. love. Okay, no, I love jazz. I love it. I grew mm -hmm. up on it, and I tried to learn. So it's it's a different language. Improvisation. Yeah, it is. I was terrible. I'm such a perfectionist that I was like, nope, I'll, I'll do it. I'll play in the jazz ensembles, but I I'm gonna refuse to improvise at all. I was <laughs> yeah, I was terrible. So I played the baritone saxophone most of the time in jazz bands. Back to the story. Back to the story. Now in Kalamazoo. Here, all three of his children were born. So we had Patricia, or Patty List, born in 1955. John Jr. List was born in 1956. And Frederick List was born in 1958. So total four kids. Three kids. Well, three kids and one three kids, step, step, kid. step kid. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. He had a good job with a paper company here. And even though they were in a good financial situation, since he was promoted to being a general supervisor, his wife, Helen, became an alcoholic. Oh, no, Helen. <laughs> Poor Helen. Their marriage became a little strenuous because of this, and they began to fight a lot more. I, I, I bet. Yes. I bet. Alcoholism is... Yeah, it's pretty, pretty intense. It is, yes. They were also complete opposites. Okay, so John was a very reserved, quiet introvert, and Helen was an extrovert, very open. She liked to party, and she liked to meet people. Right. Opposites usually attract, but being a religious man, yes. <laughs> that did not do so well. Yes, especially he seems like he's a very staunch person. And 1950s, he's the man. He's the head of the household. Mm -hmm. You will do as I tell you. And very religious. That's yes. the big overtone to all of this. Oh. She actually loved confrontation with him. I'm sure she did. <laughs> yep. And she sounds like a very fiery, feisty yes, woman. Yes, and he did not. Yeah. Helen's daughter, Brenda, recalled that Helen started taking tranquilizers and drinking heavily oh and would make gosh. ungenerous comparisons between John and her first husband, Marvin. Oh, okay. oh, no. Now, in the book Righteous Carnage, The List Murders of Westfield by Timothy Benford and James Johnson, there's a passage in here that from Brenda, and she states, Mom was really boozing it up then. <laughs> 
I she, love the way she said that. Well, mom is really boozing it up back then. And that's a quote. Yeah. She kept saying that she couldn't forget Marvin, that John was nothing compared to him, and she was on heavy doses of tranquilizers. Yep, because back in the 50s, like, just trank everybody up mm-hmm. or drink, and that's how you dealt with your issues. Yep. You don't talk to people. Passive. You don't do therapy. Mm-hmm. It's like, let's just give you lots of tranquilizers to calm you down. Calm you down. Yeah, exactly. And have a drink because mm-hmm. that also will just make you feel better. Right. Oh, my gosh. Yep. That's that's the go to. Dad couldn't control her. One night he was reading at the kitchen table and she kept nagging at him to get a butch haircut like the other men were wearing those days. Okay. okay. He tried to keep his mind on the book he was reading, but Helen's comments cut deep. As his tension increased, his face broke out in blotchy hives. Brenda oh remembered. my gosh. Suddenly he stood up and turned the table table over, sending all the dishes crashing to the floor. Oh my gosh. So she cut deep. Yeah. He broke out into hives because he can't control his woman. <laughs> cannot, cannot handle her. Oh, gosh, the 50s, man. Yeah. Not the good old days that people want them to be. And I'm going to get into this more, but when you have relationship issues now, hopefully most couples revert to therapy. But yes. I, I think back in the 1950s, that was just like... You try to put a Band-Aid over it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You don't want to, you don't want anybody else to know your problems. We're fine. Everything's great. La, la, la. Yeah, we're the happy 1960s. This is 19, what, 50s, 60s. Yeah, end of 50s. So it was pretty intense. So now Brenda's relations with her mother weren't that great either at that point and had been declining for some time. In 1960, Brenda announced she was pregnant and married Richard (gasps) Wayne Herndon at 18 oh, years old. Oh, Brenda. She just wanted to get out of that house. And she moved out. Oh. Yeah. Good so for her, I'm sorry about the early pregnancy thing, but maybe that's I think what that's she what, felt like she needed to exactly. do. Exactly. I think that's, uh, again, 1960, exactly. Women didn't have that role to like, I'm going to move up in the world and careers. Yeah, I'm, and, I'm going to live on my own and, yeah, and no. go to college. Yes, college. Mm-hmm. But no, it was... I'm going to get pregnant. Yep. Get pregnant and go start my own family so I can get out of this one. Yeah. Oh. Now I'm going to just real quick, just, I didn't put this in, in my notes because I memorized it, but she divorced the mm-hmm. first one, got married again, divorced again, and got married in 1974 again, the third one. And then mm-hmm. I think that was it. Third time's a charm. Third time <laughs> for Brenda it was. <laughs> oh. And I think they just never talked to her after that. They just kind of cut her off. Because she's never really kind of mentioned in anything else in the research at, after oh, that. Wow. So she's gone out she's of the house. She's gone, living her own life, doing she, her own thing. Exactly. And I'm sure John List did not approve of her divorce. Yes. Is. Divorce says. Yeah. Right. Her relationship and with her mother and how she ended up, he didn't want Patty, his daughter, to end up that oh, way either. And yeah. he was afraid that that was kind of a... Bad influence exactly. on my daughter. Yeah. So it was kind of good that she was gone for him, at least, because now he can raise Patty kind of to what he wanted to do. Right. But Helen B. the alcoholic, she stopped going to church. The little heathen. Yes. It was like he he started slipping and I'll get into that more. But basically, he didn't want to, them to look at Helen to be the. Yeah. Helen is not your role model. Exactly. Yeah. Now, also in 1960. John was fired. Ooh. And you'll see this as a trend. Oh. However, yeah. (laughs) However. Why? Why did he get fired? I'll get into this, I promise. But it's really his personality. You'll see the trend, I promise, because it just keeps going over and over. He sounds like he's a bit of a control freak. And since he can't control things at his house, he might have tried overcompensating at work. Could be. He's just not a people person, though. That's kind of what comes down to it. But yes, I promise there will be more details. Okay, I'm excited. I know. Well... (laughs) <laughs> as Not excited as you can get for a true crime for, for a very horrible true crime yes but what was what was crazy in 1960 with this fire he was fired but management agreed to write in his file that he had resigned voluntarily to help give him as much time to find another job well that so, was very generous was, yeah of them. very gracious yeah soon after this though john was hired at xerox and moved to rochester new york hey xerox xerox i have a friend one of my best friends lives in rochester hey hey rochester yep. now here at xerox he was given an expense account where he was able to live a more luxurious life life. For example, him and Helen took trips to Europe 
and Helen spent money on lavish souvenirs. But with the increased roles at Xerox, which led to Director of Accounting Services, he moved up. His lack of managerial skills were a problem for Xerox because Xerox was a huge corporation and right. getting bigger and bigger yeah. to the point where he wanted a VP role. Uh huh. But Xerox knew he couldn't handle it. Yeah, I can't manage people. There was funny. There's an example in one of the books where there was like a tiff between two people, two girls, and he just kind of listened and said, "Hey, get along." That was really he, <laughs> he didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> good job. Yeah, that was, that's a good manager. <laughs> Why can't we all just get yeah. along? Just get along. <laughs> do your job. That's not gonna help. In the book Righteous Carnage, he was evaluated by an industrial psychologist who reported at Xerox. Okay. Mm-hmm who reported that John should be placed in a less stressful position and basically in a smaller company. Oh, can't handle the big corporation. Can't can't handle the stress. He can't handle the stress. He would break break out out in blotches. Yeah. Yeah. He would, when, when things got stressful, people in the offices noticed that he would break out in blotches and he couldn't get rid of it. And finally it would take a couple days to subside. Oh my gosh. Yeah. John pushed for a bigger title. Again, he did this a couple times. But again, they said no. And instead, he was let go again. Oh, John. Yeah. Then in July of 1965. So this was not too long after Xerox let him go. Same situation. They said, we'll keep you on. We'll kind of like let you look for other jobs until, you know, then we'll let you go. They were, again, very gracious for that time. Yeah. That is not how it works now. No, not at all. They're like, you're gone. Yeah. You're gone. You have two weeks. Peace out. Yeah. Then in July 1965, John accepted a job as vice president he got his job oh, he got his vp yep at first national bank in new jersey where they finally settled in so after moving around finding new jobs this is where he thought this was his home and his bread and butter okay westfield new jersey caught john's eye um, he would take the train in to go find that job and he saw westfield new jersey because this there was a very conservative lutheran church the same oh, type he no. was raised in here and a parochial school for his children. And it also had a very stately 19-room Victorian mansion there called Breeze Knoll. Oh, my gosh. 19. 19-room yes. Victorian mansion. Can you imagine? No, oh, it's haunted, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny you mentioned that uh-huh. because I didn't put this in my notes either. I wasn't going to touch on this, but Patty would tell ghost stories to the kids about <gasps> the mansion. Oh, wow. About how it was haunted. And there's like all these little stories that she would tell them because it was so big. Yeah. John and Helen fell in love with the mansion. And just a heads up, Breeze Knoll had a ballroom, marble fireplaces, and possibly a Tiffany skylight. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I they say it's Tiffany skylight in every books. But then I started doing a little deep dive. They had appraisals come and like take pictures look at the pictures of the breeze knoll but they say well it could have been a tiffany because tiffany did do some extravagant things in very smaller places right most likely didn't so but it's a 19 room mansion with a ballroom and marble yes that doesn't seem like it's a smaller place for Tiffany. no for tiffany yeah so that's they claim it's a tiffany skylight fancy yes and they fell in love and helen loves the extravagant life after xerox right, right. So. another song cue moving on up <laughs> to the east side moving on up. okay <laughs> um they fell in love with this mansion however even with john's new high-end job it was still not affordable it's i, gotta, I can imagine that it wouldn't be like a VP is good, but... A VP is good, but he's not the president. Yes. He's not the owner of the bank. Especially trying to buy this crazy huge mansion, right? Yeah. So John asks his mother to help with the down payment. His mother's still around, and she agrees. Oh, what yeah. a sweet lady. Yeah. And her name's Alma. Alma. Right? Alma. He actually invited her to move in to the mansion. Well, they've got the room. They have the room. And he had to take out a second mortgage to do this because it was barely affordable in the first place. Right. But he took out a second mortgage to renovate the third floor to create an apartment just for her. Oh. So she's got her own floor. Right. Yeah. So he's really trying to show off, Mom, I made it good. And look at me. I have everything together. Exactly. Even though he's coming to her for money. But, right, you know, but he's also trying to show off for the community, show right. off. And that was, again, back in that 1960s state of mind. If I've got the dream home. You got the dream job. I've got everything, even though he can barely financially afford everything he's doing. Right. Living way beyond his means. Exactly. Just to keep up with the Joneses. Yeah, 
exactly. That's actually funny. That's in a, in one of the books, I think. Like, oh, quote, really? Yeah. Huh. Fun fact, just to show you what kind of man John List was. Okay. okay? This was also listed from a neighbor and a policeman because they both okay. saw this. They reported John List would mow his lawn in a complete suit and tie. Oh. he who does that nobody <laughs> mows his lawn in a suit and tie he would never leave the house without being in a suit okay he was so it's really appearances for him yes that is what is important mm-hmm. wow suit and tie you wouldn't see him in like gym shorts you wouldn't see him in sweatpants yeah. always dressed to the nines okay he was always in a suit now later on it was revealed that he was dealing with his wife's continuous alcoholism and her failing health though at the same time yeah. in 1966 she blacks out and she fell nearly fracturing her skull oh my gosh she was admitted to overlook hospital and helen refused to talk to the doctors did she fall or was she pushed she fell okay no she fell okay yeah, no. Because like, I know kind of where this is going. Uh, no, I'm no. way off. Okay. Yes. All right. I think this is going to be a shocker for you. Okay. That's going to be a fun shock. Uh, fun fun shock. shock. Okay. I guess if you can call it that. <laughs> now, John told the doctor she had started to lose vision in her left eye hmm. and had severe headaches and stiffness in her legs that had gotten so bad, she couldn't get out of bed most of the time. Oh, she was, wow. She was usually bedridden. So... Again, in like Father Wants Us Dead, the podcast, like neighbors would come over to ask if the kids could come out and play or they would go out and they were really defensive of their mother. They're like, oh, no, she's, you know, she's bedridden. And she was. And John was working as a VP. Right. Taking care of his kids. Yes. Cleaning the house. Yes. And cooking. Yes. So he was doing all the roles and let his, his wife just be sick and be bedridden. Right. And he wouldn't complain once. Oh, wow. All his office people he worked with, they never heard him say anything bad about her. She would call like the office like every hour asking for him if he was in meeting. She said, it's an emergency. She would call all the time and just bother him at work. Oh, my god! And then he, she would like need something at home. Like the kids did this or kids did that. And he would go home, take care of something and come back to work. Ugh. No complaints. No wonder why. I'm assuming because I still don't know, but like no wonder why he snapped at some point and why he would get blotchy when he had to deal with stuff. He's, He's internalizing in everything, taking everything and just shoving it down uh -huh. and down. Imagine the ulcers this poor man has. Uh, well, imagine. I don't want to call him a poor man. No, don't call him a poor man. He's he's an evil man. But oh, my God. Yeah. So but it was. Yeah, you can see where all this is coming. Right. Back to Helen at, at Overlook Hospital. So doctors and the psychiatrists were still baffled about what was wrong with Helen. as She still wouldn't talk to them like she wouldn't tell them what was going on with her. Right. So um, they did cat scans. They did all this stuff on her. But they issued her some meds and sent her back home once she was feeling a little better. They're like, all right, we can't do anything else. Here's some meds. Go home. Hmm. Now, later on, we find out what's wrong with her. Oh. Helen. Yes. Had untreated tertiary syphilis. <gasps> contracted from her first husband and concealed for 18 years. Oh, my gosh. Now. I'm going to go into some crazy details because I was like, what's what's that mean? But I I want to give it to everybody listening because yes. let's paint a picture of what tertiary syphilis is. OK, okay? this was crazy. <laughs> I, I guess. So this is what. Yeah. So I want to paint a picture of what Helen was going through and why she was mostly home bedridden. Tertiary syphilis is the third and final state of syphilis, an STD that unfolds in stages when the individual affected does not receive appropriate treatment. First stage of syphilis is characterized by formation of a painless sore at the inoculation site. Six to 12 weeks after initial infection in the second state, infection spreads through the bloodstream and causes varied symptoms from fever, mm -hmm. sore throat, uh -huh. weight loss, uh -huh. hair loss, oh. and headache. Yes. Rashes may affect palms of the hands and soles of the feet. Without treatment, it progresses to a latent phase where the disease enters a, a symptomatic phase. So she okay. would probably be better, right? Right. She's doing some traveling. She's yeah. all good. And then tertiary syphilis develops when untreated years or decades after initial infection. In this final state, it affects various organs, including the skin, nervous system, and cardiovascular system. Oh. According to List, now he wrote a book oh, after the fact. John List wrote a book. He wrote a book. Oh. 
Um, and even the podcast was like, who knows if the accounts are blown out of proportion. Right. Because it's coming from him. Right. right. But Helen had pressured him into marriage by falsely claiming she was pregnant. Then insisted on marrying in Maryland. You know why? Why? In the 50s, Maryland was a state where they did not require the premarital syphilis test. <laughs> right? This was mandated by most other states. Oh, my God. Isn't that so insane? She totally knew. <laughs> totally she blinded knew. him. Like, let's go to Baltimore. It's such a beautiful, romantic city. Yeah, let's get married there. It's awesome. I, we can do that in a hurry. Right? She totally knew. She knew. She, she put the bag over his head. Now, this combined with her alcohol, alcoholism in 1969 had, according to a list again, transformed her. This is quote unquote, transformed her from an attractive young woman to an unkempt and paranoid recluse <laughs> who frequently and publicly humiliated list. And Helen would berate him in front of others. Oh, no. Like say such things as you are half the man my first husband was oh. and you have nothing to show for your war record. Whereas her first husband died fighting in the Korean War. And gave her syphilis. But gave her syphilis, which means he cheated on her. Right. So he, she's holding him up on a pedestal, even though she was, he was terrible to her. And then this knight in shining armor to her marries her out mm -hmm. of nowhere. So, yeah, it's all backwards. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that crazy? That is insane. So moral of the story so far is don't get pressured into marriage because you're pregnant and make sure that you get a syphilis test. I don't know. <laughs> well, again, maybe nowadays, yeah, you're probably going to be like, hey, honey, guess what I have? Yeah. <laughs> Versus, well, you know, I don't disclose know. your STDs yeah. to your prospective Make partner. sure you find out about your partner's history. Yes, yeah. there you go. Gotta know. There's a moral. So being a strict religious man, he didn't believe in divorce. So they were together that whole time, no matter what. Then in 1971, shit really hit the fan. Oh, no. Oh. And I even put shit. <laughs> <laughs> Things um, are getting real, y'all. Yes, 1971's the year. John List lost his high-end job at the bank because the job turned out to be more of a PR job. Oh, because yep. he's such a people person. People person. An exact opposite of what he was capable or qualified for. He could right. not handle that. Oh, no. So co-workers um, also called him a wet blanket, <laughs> quote unquote, and called him strict. And that he didn't really get along with anyone because he was very cold and calculated. He that was an accountant fits a, through and through, but not. A, well, that fits the profile of a, of a serial killer. Cold and calculated. Cold and calculated. Unfeeling. unfeeling. Yeah, no emotions. And I will explain why later, too, of how all this worked. But instead of telling his family that he lost his job. Oh, OK. Or asking his church for help because he could have. Yes. He would wake up at the same time every single morning, throw on his suit and keep up the appearance that he was this high VP executive. Because it's not keeping up with the Kardashians, y'all. It's keeping up with the list. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Yay. We'll keep good that job. up. Hey, oh. Now, he would make his way to the train station like he normally would every morning, but just sit at the train station. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that insane? That is crazy. To keep of up course. the appearance. And he didn't tell his family. Every morning he did this. He'd still even buy his wife whatever she wanted. <sighs> No. And no one was a wiser. Well, Everyone no, thought. yeah. If he's doing exactly the same thing and, and nobody really paid that much attention to him anyway because nope. they're so wrapped up in their own. Oh, yeah. In their own oh, thing. Oh, yeah. man. He was just too proud and he never wanted to touch unemployment or welfare, which to him, that would be admitting he failed. So that's right. why he didn't do it. Yeah. He still job hunted, though. He'd go to the train station and he'd job hunt, which he wanted to hunt for high paying accounting jobs like uh, his of, previous of one. Of course. He didn't want course. anything lower. Can't get rid of that mansion. Nope. And he did land one with a company that ran those photography studios and malls. Oh, Awesome. Yes. Awesome. But the Love company those. soon after moved from Manhattan to Long Island and he refused to follow them. So he's yes, like, no, nope. he's like, oh, this is my mansion. I'm not yeah, leaving. No, he's mm -hmm. not going anywhere. But then he finds a job selling life insurance policies, another job that requires opposite skills that he has. <laughs> Why? Because it costs, it's more money. It's more money. He's following the money and not following his skill set. Exactly. He's not doing much there at the life insurance policy place. Yeah, okay. I can imagine because that's. <laughs> That's all people skills. All people. So if you don't if you don't sell those in policies, what do you do? You're not really making anything, right? right? And he keeps borrowing money from his mother oh, until poor Alma. Yep, until she's like, "Nope, 
I've had it. And she cuts them off. Good for her. Yep. But Did he kick her out of the mansion? No, no. She's still there. Okay. But he then receives a foreclosed letter for his mansion. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Now, early October 1971, the culmination of his relationship with his wife, loss of his career, financial burdens, and even possibly his loose relationship with the kids. Okay. Now, mm-hmm. Fun fact, older child Patty yes. was not his perfect Lutheran child. Oh, um, Patty. Yeah, Patty was, it's the 1970s now, right? Mm-hmm. So she was into acting. Oh, she yeah. She was a teenager and she was possibly into witchcraft. <gasps> yes. Witch woman. <laughs> perfect, Angela. Thank you. Um, I'm here all night. <laughs> so he came to a very disturbing conclusion on how to fix everything. And thinking it was the only option out without having his family to suffer. His solution? Yes. To kill each and every family member to send them to heaven. No! That is not the right answer. Nope, but to him it was. But as an accountant, he, he carefully calculated every detail on how to murder his family. Oh my gosh. All right, so that concludes... Part one. Part one of John oh, List. Oh, that's such a cliffhanger. I can't Isn't wait to crazy? record again so I can hear the rest of the story. Oh, and it just gets more batshit crazy oh, from here. Oh, my gosh. Um, and there's so much. Yeah. So it, isn't this crazy? I've only gotten to that part. And this we'll, is insane. Like, yeah. it's crazy. And they haven't even, like, killed anybody nope. yet. Oh. Background. We needed that background yeah, on John List and his family. So, so come back next week. Yes. Part two is coming next week. <sighs> Movie time. Movie time. All right. This week's episode's movie is Frailty. 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 And uh, I never curse. I never curse on this podcast. <laughs> so if you, if my family is listening, please earmuffs cover your ears. Fuck this movie. <laughs> it's so hilarious. I got that text. That was the last text Angela sent me after she finished this movie. Now I, I'm the opposite. I really love this movie. Okay, now, of course you do. I love every movie of that I give to Angela. So Frailty was released in 2001. Uh huh. I got 7.2 out of 10 stars on IMDb. And uh. here is the synopsis. A mysterious man arrives at the offices of an FBI agent and recounts his childhood, how his religious fanatic father received visions telling him to destroy people who were in fact, quote unquote, demons. <gasps> Oh. All right, Angela. <laughs> yes. Now, why? Okay, I don't know if should I go first of why I like this, or should you go first? No, of why you go. You go first. Let's let's do the positives first. Let's do pros. I, I have a couple of pros. I have a couple of things that I thought were funny and worth mentioning. But ugh. okay, go so ahead. this was Bill Paxton's first directed movie. By the, by the way, and he's the father, and he pl- he plays the father. <laughs> yeah. The, the one thing that I noticed that my husband pointed out that I didn't notice this before was, did you notice that there weren't a lot of cast in this movie? Like when you were, we were looking through the credits. Yeah. It was a very minimal cast. It is a very minimal cast. Which and I thought was cool. He did a great did job. That. Everybody yes. did great, I thought. Yeah. He was phenomenal in this movie. I think he did a fantastic job acting. He did a great job directing I still hate the movie. <laughs> She'll never get over this. I made her watch this movie. And Matthew McConaughey is one of the stars. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> but he, you notice how, like, he was a little low-key in this movie. Yeah. He was cool, but he did great, I thought. He, he, was... he wasn't He wasn't his normal caricature yes. of himself. He yeah. was actually acting. He was, a... <laughs> <laughs> he was a serious actor. And mm-hmm. I thought he did great. He, he did do great. Yeah, and I didn't know the main other main uh, the FBI agent. You know the his FBI name? Agent. Oh shoot, I did know his name. I didn't know this was his name. I've I've seen him in other things. Sure, he plays a similar, very role. serious, mm-hmm. straight man kind of role. Yes, Powers Booth. Yes, Powers Booth. What That's a name! I know. I want to name Powers. I should have named my kid Powers. Well, you know what's funny is is our initials. 
real quick. L M N O. Yes, that's right. L-M-N-O. So our next kid, if we ever had a third kid, would have been be P. Powers. So, Aww. but that's uh, I promised. I, I'm going to get a Frenchie one day, a French bulldog, and I'm going to name it Powers now. Powers because it's that P name now. Oh, but if it's a girl, you can name her Petunia, or Penelope, or Penelope, <laughs> I like or that. Pikachu. Pikachu. So Aww. anyway, sorry we we rant. You know that now. Only if it's a fond Frenchie, and you can do little yes. red cheeks on her. No, it's going to be a white Frenchie for oh, sure. Oh, you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> one day. One day. So that's, anyway, that's Nicole's dream dog. Oh my gosh, guys. If you, if, if a Frenchie shows up on my door one day, I will cry. I have a little cry because that's my, I, I used to have one, but, yeah. um, but yeah, I want another one. So anyway, Powers Booth. Powers Booth. Is the FBI, FBI agent. Yeah. The twists and turns of this movie. And it's so guttural to have kids watch their father and even just the kid actors. I don't know how kid actors do it. I don't know. Okay. Me as a mom and living in, we live in Southern California. We live close to the the film industry. We know people that are involved in the film industry. Mm -hmm. Me as a mother, I could never allow my kids to make a movie like this. I feel like even though they know that it's pretend and it's make-believe and they know how it all works, Mm -hmm. it would mess them up. I just think it would mess them up. It'd be be like scarred for life. Yeah. Yeah. And you just have no filters anymore because you've been exposed to, you know, you, hey, hold this axe and pretend to murder this guy. Yeah. Otis Otis the axe. That's why I hate this movie so much is because he was trying to get his kids so involved Mm -hmm. in the the quote unquote killing of demons. What was the quote that I sent you? It cracked me up. So I would send her quotes every once in a while that would make me laugh. But I'll talk while she does that. Yes. Spoiler alerts. We're going to give all these the spoilers. Sorry if you've I'm sure you've seen this yeah, movie by now. Yeah, the movie is what? It's over 11, 20 years old. Yeah, 20, 21, 21 years, years old. old. Yeah, This movie can drink now. Yes, so. there you go. Now, see, the reason why I love this movie is that twist at the end. So it's, again, that, like that the whole... The Kaiser Sose. <laughs> yes, and the Mouth of Madness kind of situation. You're like, well, oh, he was killing demons the whole time. No. Yes. No. Matthew so, McConaughey. Okay, here's the quote. I found the quote. Okay. So the dad says when he's explaining to his kids, kids about the visions because he's getting visions every time they touch one of the people that the demons that they kidnap he sees visions right so he says destroying he's explaining why he's doing this to his older son because the older son is like you're crazy you're Fenton's killing crazy. people mm-hmm. and the the dad says and his name is dad they never give his real name <laughs> so dad says destroying demons is a good thing killing people is bad like you are killing people <laughs> But what? they're demons. No. The visions he sees at the end. No. The, I don't the, accept that. You don't think that old man taking that kid and murdering little kids is not a demon. No. I think it's a person that is doing bad things. And does he deserve to be murdered for it? Mm. No, but that's God's wrath. No, if God wanted to kill him or get rid of him or punish him in some way, God can take care of that. He doesn't need minions. Yes, he doesn't need other people Mm -hmm. on the earth to destroy destroy it for him. He's perfectly capable of doing that on his own. He's flooded the earth, (laughs) right? Right. He sent plagues. He knows how to take us out if he needs to. But that's taking out everybody, I think. Yeah, but I'm sure if he can take out everybody, he can be selective and and hit yeah. certain people well no yes I, no just no <laughs> but see okay so this rationalizes in my head though that uh-huh. people who do evil things right yes could possibly be demons no yes they're people demons no <laughs> They could be listening to like demons could get in their head like in Amityville. Right. But okay. So do you believe in possession? Yes. Okay. I think that you can be influenced by by ghosts or by demons or by evil. Mm -hmm. You can be influenced by it. But we were all given free will. You can choose to fight it Mm -hmm. or you can choose to accept it. Well, then there you go. If you if you choose to to accept it then you're performing the works of that evil influence but what if but you you are not that evil influence okay okay what about the conjuring (laughs) we're getting we're getting so so (laughs) we're doing finger things i (laughs) I know (laughs) you guys we should video this sometime Um, that'll be for our patreons yeah (laughs) see our hands just flying at each other so okay the conjuring so she was 
She was possessed. She was possessed. By Bathsheba. By Bathsheba. And she couldn't control it because she was beaten down so much. Remember, that's how like possessions work. You get beat up and then you just, your will and then takes over her body. Right. But that's a totally different thing. Cause Is it? Because yes. ghosts are kind of in that category of demons, right? She's an evil entity. Yeah. People can be possessed by demons, but that doesn't mean that that person is a demon. And she tried to kill her. No, in the movie, she tried to kill her daughter. Exactly. In real life, no, she okay. didn't try to kill her okay. daughter. Hypothetically. The, the Bathsheba beat her up. Right. But Bathsheba didn't have her try to kill people. Amityville, that happened. Okay. Same thing. Right. But he was possessed. So, but is your soul, if your soul's not driving your physical body anymore, really? Right. That doesn't make you a demon. A demon. I think it could. I don't think it does. So your soul's not there though anymore. I think your soul is somewhere there. But you're not controlling your thoughts you're not and actions your in your mind. Actions, yeah. So, so is that like technically taken over. We're getting. We're never going to get into philosophical. this. Anyway, we're going to argue about this. Yes. No. Okay. The big thing with this is it doesn't matter if they believe that they're killing demons. They're still killing a physical person. Sure. Okay. A physical body. A physical body. Okay. That the kids don't understand. Right. The difference or he's making his kids participate in this. But at no. the end, at the end. And I hated that the most of all. Matthew McConaughey, right? The Adam, the little boy. Yes. Oh, that's starts, what the Kaiser so say. Starts you seeing. Think, you don't think he's Adam until the very yeah, end. Yeah, at the end. Yeah. He's Adam. But he sees, he starts getting lists from God. Yeah. It's not like it's random people like Fenton because he thought he was the demon right so he's the one killing people he doesn't have like he's not getting a list quote unquote like adam is so he becomes an actual serial killer and he's killing people right right but adam gets the list from god killing quote unquote demons right yeah no this is it's so messed up it's just <laughs> it is messed up but Ugh, no. it's pretty insane i don't like it i liked it <laughs> I know you don't. it was so good uh, you know what I didn't like, though? I what? didn't like the actress at the end. <laughs> I didn't like his wife. She was... Oh, praise be to God. Yeah, that was weird. And then she's pregnant. And I'm she's pregnant. Like, oh, stop. And it's going to keep stop going. Stop it, movie. Stop Otis it. Otis and the... Uh, and the what was it? The, uh, and oh, he's a you sheriff. Said, <laughs> I'm so mad at that. What I loved when Angela was texting me was that... Um, what was the the iron the big um oh when they yeah so the way that they would go about the father the way the dad would go about the killings is that he had and the angel was showing him the instruments that he needed to carry out his new mission of demon hunter correct right so the first instrument he finds because <laughs> there's a light shining on this creepy barn no it was wasn't the, the gloves first gloves first i thought the gloves oh. were with the axe oh i don't remember yeah. anyway yeah. But it, there was a light shining on. There was a light shining on this axe. And so he took the axe. And all I kept thinking is like that poor farmer's like, <laughs> where's his axe? axe? <laughs> what happened to my axe? And they even took the time to name it Otis. Otis, yeah. yes. So they, the axe came first. And then at one point, the father shows up and with this object wrapped in a blanket. And he's like, I have the last instrument before we can start carrying out what the angels are telling me we need to do. And he unrolls it and that's a lead pipe. And I'm like, a lead pipe? What is this clue? What's going on? <laughs> it's going to be a rope next right. and then a revolver. And then- right, right. <laughs> it's- there were ropes. That's true. There they had was to tie a revolver up. too. Hey, oh, well, they were all there. It was clue. Yeah. Oh my Professor gosh. Plum in the library. <laughs> No, in the in the spooky, spooky in the murder dungeon, room. the murder dungeon. Yeah, that no, you were right. So the the terrible part that I agree with was Fenton being thrown into the crazy murder dungeon for like what was it seven days and then seven days and then even more time, which I don't even know how long he was in there. So that's yeah. so sad. That's child abuse for it sure. It is child abuse. The whole thing's child abuse. Yes. The, yeah. But the story itself, I thought, was pretty cool and the fact that they are demon hunters and that they they turned and the fbi agent killed his mom and well it definitely is another take on the whole idea of being demon hunters and fighting for god's will because it makes mm-hmm. you see kind of a reality of it of serial killers and how yeah. they blame that it was yeah it was yeah. jesus so and i guess that's a plus side of this movie I guess. <laughs> I don't know. It's were, not it's not glorifying the idea of like I'm a demon hunter and I no, kill demons because no, they're really serial killers and really killing people. Sure. And, but and you even mentioned like how the the rose garden like yes. how are these graves not 
that found. It's because it's God's will. And remember the tapes being all changed. The tapes being the like, FBI yeah. agent didn't even remember him. Yeah, like, that all makes it so much more spookier in the fact that. Yeah, I did not like that because then it's valid- validating yes. the whole thing. Yep. And I hated yeah, she that was, more. She saw this whole movie going down and I was like, I didn't say, I didn't want to say anything. I know. She was very quiet on the text. Yep. I'm sending her a text like, dude. Nope. I wanted to be quiet. <laughs> yeah. Because that I knew that ending. All the way through. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, there's some fun twists ahead of your way. Uh-huh. Just keep watching. Keep watching. And I'm like, blah. All right. So obviously I love this movie, Angela hated this movie Angela how many stitches would you give this movie negative 25 (laughs) (laughs) she really hated this movie my least favorite thing that that I've had to watch and not because it wasn't a well done and a well made movie and it makes you think and there's lots of twists and turns the subject matter mm-hmm. of the whole thing making it a makes you feel crazy ill crazy huh? religious thing with mm-hmm. the child abuse stuff thrown in there and, and all of my very least favorite things coming together mm-hmm. in one movie just uh So I chose this movie, one, because it was, it took place in 1979, so our 70s theme. It ties in, Mm -hmm. yes. Two, the father being this religious zealot, killing people because he blamed it on religion. And that, oh, so I tried to, so good, tried to tie it in. So for, oh, for me, stitch wise, um, because I really like this movie, I'll give it a seven and a half out of 10 stitches because I really enjoyed it. But that's okay. I like this. I like that I can, we can talk about movies that we both don't (laughs) agree on. And thank you for watching it. I know, we are different in some ways. How did that happen? (laughs) Slightly. We're slightly different. But we will uh, probably return with another 70s horror movie that relates a little bit again. So we'll see. Oh, (laughs) goody. We'll see. With that, thank you for tuning in to our podcast. Stay tuned for episode two of the John List story. Yes. I'm excited and terrified to hear what happens oh it's such a doozy and don't forget send in your listener stories yes we would love to very soon create a whole podcast based around your listener stories telling those stories and hearing our takes on them yes and that again our, our email address is the ominous stitch at gmail.com we also have a facebook page you can send you can dm us on that page um instagram or instagram twitter t- twitter TikTok kind of. TikTok coming. We'll be there. TikTok's in the works. I think what I like to do is to show videos of us recording like this. Oh, for TikTok? Yes. (laughs) Just little snippets. I think you guys would enjoy seeing us because we are silly. Also, jump over to our YouTube page to watch Please. our fabulous hands. I promise we're getting better at recording our hands. <laughs> we're trying. There's some, I just, you know, it's funny. I found some instruments that we could use to do it better, but uh-huh. we'd have to spend some money. But oh, okay. maybe well, one day. We'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. It's getting better, I promise, every time. We promise. But listen to some more hilarious banter oh, on man. those videos. Yes. And with that, we'll see you next week, Stitchers. See you, Stitchers. Stitchers.